All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to the Tontos team. Thanks for joining. What is Tontos? What is Tontos it? is the first and only puff pasta chip. Four of your favorite Italian flavors yep. in a snackable form. I love it. It also sounds crazy to me. What's going on with the, with the market in terms of this new category, right? And so clearly you have a chef background, you're a legend in the kitchen. What's making you want to go and to start a CPG company and bring this thing to every consumer out there? Well, chefs are notoriously crazy and make them work That's harder true. for themselves. We, we don't ever take the easy way of Why doing things. Why is that? Uh, I think because we're masochists so hard. Okay. Like we like pain, we like suffering. Yeah. And this project <laughs> came with a fair share of pain and suffering simply because we created or I created this product that never existed before. And so it wasn't as simple as white labeling an olive oil, white labeling a spice brand, getting someone to just produce a hot sauce. We're creating an entirely new chip category in that snack space by puffing pasta. While there may be some other things out there, similar uh, shapes of pasta, you look at Japanese brands, they're extruding things that look like noodles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're made of rice flour, they're made of pea protein, they're made of different types of like wheat substitutes, where this is wheat and water. True pasta at its most natural form. And so it started as a happy accident yeah, explain in the that. restaurant. Walk people through that. So how did this happen? What was the aha moment? But give us give us day zero. Yeah, day zero. I was I was running a restaurant that was pasta focused here in LA. Okay. Um, I'm known for pasta. I'm the pasta guy. Pasta it's, king. It is the the prince of pasta, the prince of penne, the master of manicotti, <laughs> the, the, the ruler, of the ruler <laughs> of rigatoni. That. You know, Ooh, however you want to call it. Jesus. And so I was doing a private dinner and we had blanched off a bunch of pasta in advance. Okay. Uh, and we had it par cooked sitting in the walk-in on the top shelf on sheet trays. Uh, a couple days after the dinner, one of the sheet trays got left behind and was sitting under the fan in the walk-in. And I found it when I was cleaning out the walk-in and it looked like dried chicharron. Like the little right. yeah, yeah. The pre-fried chicharron, pre chicharron pellets. Okay. And I was like, that's odd. Like, what will happen if I throw it in the deep fryer? And it kind of puffed up and it had this really awesome so you just airy thought, looking. Let me put it in the deep fryer. Let me fryer. throw it in the fryer. Well, what, what's, what could happen? Okay. Because I've tried throwing fresh extruded pasta into the fryer and the texture is not the best. It kind of like gets stuck in your teeth. The and manic like, genius. Yeah, I wasn't like a fan of that route. Okay. And so nachos and pasta being my two favorite food groups. I was like, I'm on to something here. And so you're a good friend to have. <laughs> uh, I, I started kind of playing around with this idea of dehydrating cooked pasta. Okay. And then through lots and lots of trial and error, I figured out a formula for rehydrating the pasta by boiling it in water, essentially overcooking it, yeah. then dehydrating it like a chicharron pellet okay. and then frying it. And we had this really awesome puff pasta chip. I was calling it a nacho at the time, and I was seasoning it with like Italian Mexican spices put together, okay. and then serving it with like Italian refried beans and ricotta salada, and it was like an opening bite for all of my pop-up dinners. Wow. Okay. And so through those pop-up dinners is when Sean finally got to try it. Okay. And he goes, he, say, he asked if he could stay after the dinner. And was like, you're on to something here. Have you ever thought about bagging these? But when you tried it, it was next to something. So there was like a, it was like an opening dish. A little like, a little piece, it was part of a, a bite. flavor yeah. profile. It was, it was yeah. pasta and nachos married together. He okay. called it pasta nachos on the menu. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I love pasta. Like, I love nachos. Like, yeah. And I, I ate it and I sat on it and I was like, that tasted really good. What is it? And your brain exploded. You're like, this I was like, is a I've never had something like this before. And then at some point, what happens in your mind? You start I, thinking, I, was like, I think we I, could do something here, start a company. Da, 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 da. Well, no, I, not even that far. I was like, okay. I, I asked him, what is it? What is it? Like, Tell me about it. And then he told me, he's like, my dream is to bring this to market one day. I was like, that's what I do. That's what you do. Yeah. It was, it was okay. kind of the opposite. It was like, have you ever thought about bringing this to market? And I was yeah. like, I've thought about it, but I don't know anything <laughs> yeah. about that. That's like, right. I'm a chef. Yeah. Like I know how to build communities. I know how to inspire people how to cook. Absolutely. And I, and I love sharing my passion for food yeah. and eating. And now you're the Prince of Puff. <laughs> and now I'm the Prince of Puff. <laughs> okay. So as the Prince of Puff, so what's the next step here? So you guys start chatting. You're at this dinner and you're thinking like, okay, are there other flavors we can play with? How big is this brand? What are we thinking? Well, it was it interesting because the other flavors came down the road. 
It started as a chef-driven flavor profile concept. Things like yuzu and Aleppo pepper and Szechuan chili flake and kind of like those really chef-y, esoteric, out-of-the-box flavors that we were kind of like started playing around with. And then we're like, well, if we're going to do this, we need a branding team. So we use kind of like friends of friends to help us develop our initial packaging and our initial brand identity. Yeah. And we're going through those like phone calls and conversations and like whiteboard sessions. And they came to us and they're like, you're known for Italian food. Mm. Well, have you ever thought about doing classic Italian like red sauce, white, red and white checkered tablecloth flavors? Mm. And we like, Sean and I looked at each other and we're like, that's a really good idea. Simply because then you don't have to educate people on what yuzu is. You don't have to educate people on, on what a pink peppercorn is. Yeah. We talked a little bit about this when, with, with, when I tried the chip. And it was all about how, like, you're keeping it simple in, in the things that, like, people understand. Like, yeah. the marinara. Yes. Nostalgia. Exactly. People know it. People know it. And I think that's, like, the magic of pasta in general is, like, everybody has a memory to pasta. Regardless of where you came from, where you grew up, what background you came from. Even if it's that blue box mac and cheese everybody has some sort of prior relationship with pasta. Yeah. And so the idea of these classic nostalgic Italian flavors, cheese and pepper, marinero, pesto, are all things people can relate to on some level. Well, especially when, they, when you grow up, yeah. like when you have kids, all you eat is pasta but with either red sauce, green sauce, or butter. So it just made sense. Give people a window into the name. So Tantos, what does this mean? Tantos is I, I, it, my, my pop-up series. So when I left the restaurants and I started going off on my own, yeah. uh, I came up with this name, Tanto C, which roughly means so much yes when translated from Italian. Yeah. And so much yes is that feeling that you get when you sit down on the table and all of the food just starts coming out. And you just are looking around with the people around you and you're so much yes. And so... We shortened it and combined it. I think it might have been My your wife. wife yeah. Your wife, Tracy. She, all the credit. Okay. Uh, we were like playing around with the idea and we wanted to come up with something that didn't exist but sounded familiar. Okay. And so, so you'll get Cheetos, Fritos, Doritos. That's right. Made up words. Yeah. Not real words. But all ending in? OS. 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 Yeah. And so we're like, how about Tantos? I love that. And then you guys landed on it. And yeah. that it stuck. And also it means like a lot in Spanish. It's a Spanish word too. Yes. Uh -huh. means a lot. So it kind of like it played into that idea of like staying true to the origin yeah. of that so much yes feeling. And I still think when you eat these, you still can have that so much yes. Of course. And so, okay. So then what, how many recipes are you thinking about from a business perspective? You're thinking we're going to launch with three SKUs, four SKUs, five, eight SKUs. Cause you're a chef. So your brine can go. You can build a hundred of these yes. things, right? You yes. can go nuts, but well, you got to start small when it comes to introducing things to the market. Well, when we first started the recipe development phase, we went through seven months of him creating different flavors. I think we started with like six or seven okay. and then some of them were just weren't hitting. So we're like, Hey, let's take that one out. So then we kind of landed on four. And then not the four that you see, we actually came up with the three. And then um, the fourth one was actually tiramisu. A sweet flavor. A dessert. A dessert. dessert. Because you don't see dessert chips. Whoa. Or dessert Which was mind-blowing. And so it had all of the lovable flavors oh and characteristics God. of tiramisu. This is genius. And so those were our four flavors. We had the marinara, the pesto, the cacio pepe, and tiramisu. And we're like, okay, we're making this kind of like out of commissary apartment style kitchens, really doing this gorilla ground leg work, bootstrapping it all on our own. Yeah. But we wanted to see if people were interested in it. I had a decent social media following at the time. Yes, you did. And, and I mean, this was back, what, 2020? 2020. 2020. Okay. So I was, I was still growing. I was still like new in the social media realm, like a, a decent, maybe like 30,000 followers, 50,000 yeah. followers, something, yeah. you know, modest. And so we kind of treated it like sneaker drops. And we're, I was living in L.A. We were, we were in L.A. And I was like, you know, Supreme drop sneakers. It's like yeah. there's this hype crowd, hype beast situation around Absolutely. things. Why don't we bring that to food? Okay. And so we would post about it on my story. Hey, we're going to do a limited edition release. And we do about 100 units of each flavor. Okay. Four, 400. First round, I think, sold out in less than six minutes. Wow. wow. And we're like, okay. Like, That's incredible. Got on to something. Go. 
Yeah. And we did that for about four months and the time kept on going down six minutes, five minutes, all the way down to like less than two minutes. We'd sell out. And so people are reordering, ordering for the first time. You're starting to see that there's a, they love it. Well, they people love get, it. people are getting mad. Of course. Yes. They're like, we get a lot of angry email. Sean, Sean. We could, everyone was like, why are you dropping only the same time every day? Like once a month, we're like, we're just like at any point. We're and just, people didn't know we were making it in our part, like a part right. of, no, of course, is, of course, you know, of it's of like, course. It's scrappy. limited edition. Yeah. There's scrappy. a lot of work Let's on you. You don't have hot. a million bags. Yeah. 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 You know, exactly. bagging every single individual one, frying them all, like dividing out into all the boxes. Sealing the bags, sealing the boxes. Shipping, shipping. labels, like the order lists, like trying to figure, okay, like Alan got one marinara, two pesto, like, you know, like really, yeah. really digging into it. I love and that. Then, but the feedback you were getting was great. Tremendous. No, tremendous. Nothing bad. And w was tiramisu part of that or no? Yes. It was. So tiramisu was part of that. And then I was just getting very busy between social media was growing, yeah. my TV uh, stuff. television presence started growing, uh, the world was opening back up and I started doing real in-life person events yeah. and it was just becoming too much weight for me to do all of the frying, packing, sure. shipping. Sure. And Sean and I had a conversation and he goes, well, we could either pack up and say like, hey, we broke even. That was fun. Okay. Cool. Wrap good, it up. Good memory. Good, yeah, good chapter. Story. Yeah. yeah. Or we each invest a little more money. Yeah. And we see if we could turn this into a thing. Okay. And you guys got married, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and here you are in your adventure. And here we, yeah, are. we are. Okay. Well, it's a good team. I mean, obviously you have a lot of experience. Maybe yeah. you can speak to some of that, your background. Yeah. So my background, I started another business. I'm an entrepreneur by trade. My other main business is called Pride Bites, pet products. We do custom manufacturing of pet products. We've been around for about 10 years, started that right out of college. And what I like to tell Joe is that's, I, Pride Bites was my real life MBA. Yeah. And I learned everything that I know about business through Pride Bites, through trial and error. And that business is going very well, very happy about it, I have a great team. Um, started this nice and weekends with Joe and basically told him I can do it full time as well. I have the capacity. I, I love working and I don't, I shouldn't have to quit my other job to do this also because sure. my drive is just that much more than the average person. So you enjoy it. You enjoy I, I, it. I love you it. This is, a lot. So, this is my passion. I, I love building business. I love bringing things to life. That is, it's very exciting for me. And, um, this has taken on a life of its own and it's just been been one of the most fun projects I've had to date. When you guys talk to retailers, what are they seeing in the space? And so is it like, okay, so it's a chip category. The tiramisu thing blows me away. That could be a dessert. Where do you even find it in a store? Are you blowing their minds? Like, what are you getting from the retailer side of things? Well, so we're actually not coming out with tiramisu, sneak peek. We're yeah. gonna, that's our back pocket flavor. Yeah, that's going to be- I after, can't wait for that, yeah. by the way. So the, that sounds the bananas. A lot of the feedback we were getting from not only inve potential investors, investors, and some retailers and buyers was that we didn't have a plain flavor. Okay. Yeah. For that makes dipping sense. in sour cream and onion dip, right. dipping your Trojan in, horse in product. Chili, like yeah. just kind of like the base nacho, the base chip. Okay. And so looking at that CPG space, knowing what slotting fees are, knowing how hard it is to have a ton of different SKUs, yeah. we decided to make the the we hey, we do need it. We need a plain flavor. Yeah. And that's where tiramisu got put in the back burner. And we came up with Classico, which is sea salt and olive oil. Okay. So if someone opens a Classico bag, how would you like them as chef, as someone who's done in the game, how would you like them to enjoy it? Are they drinking it with wine? What's the, give me the vibe. You see, what I love about them is the vibe is could be anywhere you want. You're at a, a t-ball game with your kids. Sean's kids actually love eating them with scrambled eggs. She calls it Tonko egg Eggies. What? And it's scrambled eggs. She, because of the shape, it's like a little like a cup. A, cup. a little cup. She puts the scrambled egg inside one, one Tonto and she eats it. Yeah. Which, which flavor? Eat, which flavor does she Her do favorite's that? pesto. That's just her favorite. Wow. And then like, but all, I, I like to do the David Chang route and fill it with caviar and creme fraiche. That's my right. guy. Right. You know, <laughs> like go. there's, yeah. there's the, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to the caviar one, which one do you go with? The sea salt? Uh, or the, uh, the Classico? I actually like the, either the cacio or the marinara. goes okay. really well with the caviar, personally. That's amazing. But it's really whatever you like the most. Right. So if you're right. hosting a party and you want to do the caviar, you can just eat any flavor that you, that you I'll want. I'll often, too, open a bag of each and put them in a big bowl oh. and serve them like that. Yeah, much as better. As like a party pack. A little variety. And that way, because they're already hard enough to only eat one, mm -hmm. when people then, every time they take one is a different flavor, yeah. the bowl's gone in a matter of minutes. Yeah. As you guys are launching, what are the things that are keeping you up at night? 
Because you already have some proof points, right? You know you're doing the drops. You know people love them. The creativity, I think for you, probably the hard part is like keeping the creativity down because you just want to make sure your skews crush, right? And so there's like a focus that's annoying to people like me and I think people like you. But like what keeps you up at night just in terms of like... Well, I think what keeps me up at night is different from Joe. For me, it's cash flow. Logistics, <laughs> inventory. That's hilarious. That's, that's not what, thinking about. That's what keeps me up. <laughs> like, perfect sense. And we talk about obviously short term and long term. You don't term. sleep. You don't no. sleep. No, short term and long term <laughs> goals. Short term, yeah, we have a truck load and it's in our fulfillment center and we can start fulfilling. But then as Joe takes over the, the marketing and the social and we start to grow yeah. our retail count from one to 10 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 50,000, it's like, oh my God. Cash flow, inventory, logistics, like how do I keep up with it? So that's what keeps me up at night. I think for me, it's it's the same feeling that I know a lot. I, and I think it's a chef thing, perhaps, is like no matter how successful you become as a chef, yeah. you always lack this confidence in that people actually want to eat your food and want to try what you're making. Yeah. And um, so whether I'm selling tickets for a pop-up event yes. or I'm cooking a dinner or I'm launching a food product – there's the back of thing in my mind. I'm like, nobody's going to buy this. Why? Where does that? So I, I work with a lot of chefs and I always wonder where that comes from. It's like this fear that no one will show up tomorrow. Nobody will show up. Yeah. Why? Where does this? I mean, I get it. And I actually love it because it keeps you guys driven and like in the yeah. kitchen and trying to create all the time. But then a party makes me sad because I'm like, but they'll show up. Like they're always going to yeah, show up. I mean, for you. I did. I did a pop up dinner last night and it, it sold out in two minutes. And that like blows my mind because <laughs> getting ready to hit the post button, I'm like, no one's going to buy no it. One's no, gonna one's care. Gonna, no one's going to buy this. No one's going to care. It's so real. And then it's like, you hit it and all of a sudden you're sold out. And it's like, it's still, it still doesn't click. But you don't care. But no, yeah. It no, you st- it, doesn't, it doesn't make you feel any better. It's a weird, weird thing. And I don't know if it's only chefs, if it extends to other, but that's like what keeps me up at night. When I do real estate development and we open projects, so the grand opening day, I feel nothing. It's like, I don't care. It's the weirdest thing. And I'm trying to sit with that nothingness, not to get therapeutic here, but there's a part of me that's like, what is happening there? Like, why, why do I feel nothing? Wow. Right? Like when it sells out, why do we, it's like, what's the next thing? It's like, why do, what's the, but there's a space in that that I'm trying to figure out. I, I have the same thing when I'm doing sales, when I'm pitching all these big stores or even other businesses, I get the big sale and then I don't really, I feel nothing. I don't care. Yeah. Where's the next one? The yeah. next one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the marketing stuff. And so you're clearly a marketing pro. What is the strategy here with Tantos? So we have like, uh, I I don't know how many pronged approach, but we have a pronged approach. I mean, I understand very well how different social media platforms curate and attract different audiences and different communities. And so we're approaching Instagram and social media and that marketing funnel and channel as a little more curated, as a little more lifestyle focused, um, as a little bit more about like, hey, You buy into our brand ethos and our style. This is the kind of product that you like and what what is for you. But then you look at something like TikTok and that funnel, and that is more about organic, behind the scenes, seeing the founder, seeing the journey. And so we have a whole set of, you know, I'm I'm backlogged on content of like seeing packaging for the first time, our photo shoots, our production runs, what it's like in a day of being a content producer, what it's like being a day in a business owner, kind of like all those different things. Um, and then we have like our professional approach, which is kind of like this new funnel okay. that we've developed, which is taking that idea of us being professionals and us being industry experts mm-hmm. to the next level. So building out a blog on our website oh, cool. for other CPG startups, for other businesses, with small blogs, posts, and insights, almost like you'd find on LinkedIn, that's like, how do you rebrand a product? Why do you need to start an LLC? What is it like developing flavors? What is the importance of having a distribution network? And kind of like all these little tidbits and nuggets of information that we've picked up along the way. So that way, business professionals and other industry insiders are looking at us and coming to us for answers and advice and as a source of knowledge and inspiration. We have people coming to us that are curious about the behind the scenes and the journey. And then we have the people coming to us from the lifestyle approach and buying into the brand because it's a very cool, interesting product that looks fun and lively and they want to be a part of that as well. And I assume you guys will sell it also on TikTok. People can just click and buy the right, product Right, the TikTok there. shop. I mean, that's, yep. that's a huge 
opportunity for absolutely. small businesses across the board. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen some people's life change just because of that feature, oddly yes. enough, and they become absolutely. million, you know, million dollar companies and larger funding. How are you guys going about funding this? Is it bootstrapped? Are you getting investors? What's going on? So we have a, uh, we opened up a convertible note round yeah. and we're raising money on that. Uh, we've filled more than half of it. So we're doing great on that. So we're always looking for cash. Um, everyone, you <laughs> yeah. can never have enough. That's true. But yeah, so we're on a, basically on a friends and family seed round. Yeah. And when it comes to the, the launch, what else is planned? So are you, are you doing events? Are you, you know, how are you going to get this thing out there? So I've been building these up for the past three years and every food and wine event that I go to every dinner that I host, they're part of the menu and part of everything that I do. So these travel with me full time in anticipation of just getting people excited about them, getting people to try them and getting people talking about them. Um, then now once we launch, uh, we have a couple of little like kind of ideas and tidbits, something like a golden ticket in the sense where it's like, oh, that's hey, fun. you know, you buy these, there'll be a golden ticket in one bag. I'm going to come and host a Tonto's dinner party for you and your friends. Fuck, I will fly yeah. anywhere in the country. Dude. And yeah. so like, who's going to find the golden ticket? I'm going to find it. In the bag of Tonto's. Uh, and I'll come and we'll, we'll have a Tonto's party. That's really smart. Um, things like that. Well, we, we obviously are going to go the, the PR route and host like... Yeah. Tonto's parties for the writers, the journalists, the bloggers, the dirty word influencers to just kind of like get the word out there and get people excited about it. And so it's less about building a following because I don't like the word following. It's about building a community because yeah, community communities is. have longevity. Of course. And when it comes to not, I know it's early days, but when it comes to other SKUs, you're thinking about maybe releasing 2025. What, you know, obviously the tiramisu sounds like is on deck. Are yeah, there any other ones that you we want have? To? We have a spicy one, um, rabiata. We have like your traditional mac and cheese yeah. to counterbalance the cashew pepe. We have some things in our back pocket that we're excited about. Alternative products in addition to mm-hmm. the snacks that we're kind of brainstorming and workshopping, but and developing selling, selling the spices on their own because I have people oh, like that's interesting. Smart. Like during the friends and family tasting round, I would send not only the bags of product yeah. with the different versions, I would send the spice mix yeah. alongside it so you could try it off the chip just that's to really kind of smart. like get a like different toppers. approach. Yeah. And people would they'd be putting it on their avocado toast, they'd be putting it on their popcorn, so they'd be another, sprinkling it on pizza yeah. crust. Yeah. And so having that as another spices. skew outside of just the chip and letting people really get creative with the product. And then some like obscure limited edition ideas, like working with other brands. Uh, You see like Trough and Hidden Valley doing things together and kind of like creating a Hidden Valley Trough flavor or however it may be, bringing in that outside brand that has an interesting flavor profile or another friendly aesthetic that would pair well with the chips and letting that spice come to life and that flavor come to life through Tontos. And we would have played around with the idea because like we're both pet lovers. We both like oh. are big animal fans. Yeah. And so like people love pet products. So why not like maybe try to develop a version that's air fried instead of fried in oil and something that could be like dog friendly and make it like bacon flavored. Wow. And we do like a limited edition Tontos by Tito, <laughs> our puppy, easy. you know, like there's yeah. the, po- the possibilities are endless. The possibilities. You know, it's funny. I've never wanted caviar more in an interview ever than I do right now. <laughs> When it comes to you guys thinking about this chip, do you think there's something happening in the culture from a food perspective in the kitchen specifically that there's sort of like Cheetos are done, you know, potato chips are done. This is sort of the new category, a new immersion of how people will snack in the next 10, 20 years. How do you think about that? Well, I think part of like our ethos when we were starting and looking at the nuances of what we wanted to create. Do we want it to be gluten-free? Do we want it to be a health product? Do we need it to be keto? Kind of like all these like buzzwords and things that you're seeing a lot of now in the space, all the chickpea chips 100%. and all of the puffed lotus bean flower much. roots much, and yeah. the different crazy things that are out there. I mean, you think five years ago, eggs weren't good for us. Hmm. Now eggs are back. And so we really wanted <laughs> to create a product that was timeless, yeah. similar to all of those other potato chips, Doritos and Cheetos and things that have been around for years and And will still be around and not go anywhere. And so we're looking to fit into that category. We're not trying to create a health product. We're not creating a trend. We're not trying to be a flash in the pan. We want to be a change 
for the sake of creating something new that's going to stay. What I love about the story, and I really hope this plays out like in five, 10 years when we're looking back on it and we're like, oh, remember the time they told you that it ends in OS just like Cheetos and Fritos? And that's like a line that you guys, it just made you guys like geniuses and the world caught on later, almost like Goop. When they went with Goop, it's like Google, every, all these billion yeah. dollar companies yeah. have two O's. And so Gwyneth was like, oh, we'll do Goop, put the two the O's o, in the middle the of my OS. acronyms. <laughs> yeah, maybe the OS is part of that thing. Uh, for people listening, once you guys launch, what's the price point and the where can they get them? Yeah, so uh, Amazon and eTontos.com, first and foremost. The four-ounce family size is going to be five ninety-nine. The one-ounce single serve is going to be one ninety-nine, And then uh, soon be in, uh, in your local grocery store. All right, what else should people know? Where can they find you? Instagram, obviously. TikTok, Instagram, it sounds like. TikTok, you per- They should follow you. They should follow me, for Chef sure. Joe Sasto, and follow Tontos, Eat Tontos. It's easy enough to remember because... It's exactly what you want to do. Let's do a giveaway too. And so people listening that yeah. are listening right now, we'll do a giveaway. We will uh, do a giveaway. And maybe the golden ticket will be inside. It could be. Who knows? It could be. <laughs> I have us. some here. I feel oh, like yeah, we yeah. Need let's to try do it. Let's try before, it actually. Yes. Before we have our sample bags from the sample run. All right, what flavor is this one? The marinara? So this is marinara. My personal favorite is marinara. This is your profile. And it's our hero flavor. And everyone has a different flavor. That's how I knew we were on to a good flavor profile as we were developing, yeah. is that there was not a consistent favorite. Correct. That's and I think that's important to think about when you're starting a product. Absolutely. If there's one clear favorite, your other flavors are not as good. Well, and, all, and also when people were giving us feedback, they, they kept on telling us how they eat it. Yeah. They ice cream, they crunch it up and put it on salads as crouton. I mean, things that we didn't even think about. That's really cool. And that's how we're like, oh, okay, we're really onto something too. Nick, are you ready for some good ASMR? This is Nick's favorite. <laughs> this is Nick's favorite part when he's editing these things. So when we first started, when Joe was doing it out of his own, uh, out of his apartment, it was a three-step process. And when I started developing the product for mass production, my ears are like off right now. <laughs> so a three-step process is not is not profitable. It's not scalable. Every bite's getting better. <laughs> so we had to, I had to develop a way to mass produce these in a two-step process and subsequently became an airier and more consistent crunch. Why am I getting different flavors in every bite? Why is that happening? Like it's a different, something else, like a different flavor emerges and it's more amazing as I eat more. Because it grows on you. Like the spice it is grows blue. On you. Why does that happen? Yeah. I honestly think it's the tomato powder because you don't find tomato powder in a lot of chips or in a lot of products in general. And so because it's just, just dried tomato, as that tomato starts to rehydrate on your palate, on your tongue, yeah. you're getting that sweetness, you're getting that acid, you're getting that umami. And then like you're getting hit with the salt, the garlic, the onion, like all the other like when marinara that salt spices. Hits, holy yeah. shit for me anyway. I'm like, whoa. Well, wait till you have the Classico. That has the most perfect amount of salt in a chip I've ever had. This is so good. $6.99 is this bag? $5.99. $5.99. Yeah. Discount. We're, com- we're competitively pricing it. So we want these to move. Nice work. I'm excited for you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.